Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to mix it on up a bit and do something that I've never done before and something that I have been wanting to film since the very beginning of starting my channel. I've partnered up with Dalba to really narrow in on the complexion process, specifically how to achieve this really dewy, glowy, glass-like effect to your skin. So basically, it's a glass skin makeup masterclass. Ooh, I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that a lot. I think we just found our new video title. Also, full disclaimer, this video might be a little longer than from what you're used to on my channel, but only because I want this to be as thorough as possible. This is quite literally a, a mini masterclass. In fact, I'm not even gonna put um, YouTube ads in this video. I want you to get as much possible out of this without all those interruptions and stuff. So anyways, with that said, let's get started. Alrighty, as you can see, I have nothing on my skin. So we're gonna start from the very beginning, step one, which is skin prep. For the last three, maybe four months, I've been using this Dalba Skin Mist to prep my skin with. I'll shake it up really well and just douse my skin with it. And trust and believe, I mean douse, completely drench my skin in it. I'll leave this here for a few minutes for the skin to soak it up before I continue on. So, you know, while I'm waiting for this to absorb, I'll tell you how I even found this product. If you've been following me on TikTok, you've heard me talk about this spray before. I found it on Amazon of all places. You know how that goes. You go on Amazon and before you know it, you start looking into things you never knew you had. Same situation, one night I was Googling facial sprays or facial mist or something like that. And this was the third one to pop up under that category. So I looked into it and I saw they had tons of five-star reviews. Um, I think I read they sold over 10 million bottles of this. And the ingredients I was really attracted to, it has the niacinamide in there, it has the white truffle, the avocado oil, ingredients that would nourish my skin without irritating it. That's another thing too. Is this dry by the way? No, not yet. Just another minute longer. I've shared with you before that my skin is super, super sensitive. So I know within seconds of applying a product for the first time, if it's going to cause any problems, you know what I mean? But this Dalba mist hasn't caused any issues whatsoever. If anything, it's brought down a lot of the redness and inflammation in my skin. I noticed in a lot of the reviews that people were saying they got a really um, glowy finish to their skin from using this. And that's ultimately what led me to just, you know, take the plunge, buy it and try it out because we love glowing skin around here so that's what leads me to including this in today's tutorial prepping your skin well is ultimately going to be the deciding factor in how your makeup turns out because our makeup is only as good as the condition our skin is in it doesn't mean you have to go out and spend tons and tons and tons of money on skincare to get a beautiful result that's not the case in fact i'll show you as an example today i'll just use this spray serum as the only skin prep you know, agent in today's look. Of course, if you're rocking this for the daytime, you'll wanna incorporate your SPF, but I'm in the studio today, so it doesn't really make a difference to me, so I'm gonna rock this as is. Okay, this has had plenty of time to absorb. The skin looks really fresh and glowy and luminous, and we love that. So let's move on to foundation. I'm gonna be using the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. One of the shades is called Sand, and the other is called Citrine. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plexiglass illuminator and mix in the smallest amount into the back of my hand. This is going to give it that extra boost of radiance. I'm going to start with the lighter shade here and look at what I do. I'm just mixing these two together. <laughs> I can't talk. I'm just mixing these two together. Take whatever is left on my finger and then take a makeup sponge that's damp and really press this foundation into the skin. The reason I use two different shades is because there's really no one face that is one dimensional. So I'll use the brighter shade in the center of the face and use the deeper shade around the perimeter to add back in that warmth and help match my face to my neck, which currently has a spray tan. Applying this along the jawline, the chin, the cheeks, the nose, a little bit on the center of the forehead and look at what this is doing for my skin. Okay, so once I have that first shade applied, it should start looking a little something like this. So now we're gonna move on to the warmer shade. 
I'm adding a smidge of this, not as much as the last time. You'll notice here with the placement of this deeper foundation shade, I'm keeping most of the placement around the forehead where the, you know, the sun would most naturally hit. And then with whatever I have left over in the sponge, I'll bring down to underneath those cheekbones, right? Even a little bit underneath the nose. Everyone's gonna be a little different and have different preferences, but for the most part, this is how I would apply two different foundation shades uh, on my clients to build that shape I'm looking for. I do take my time with this, you all, really pressing this into the skin, avoiding the under eye area though, because we're gonna apply concealer there anyways, and there's no sense in having to layer up product when it's not necessary. We want to avoid the possibility of creasing. A lot of you may ask, why am I using two different foundation shades? And what this is doing is, this is adding warmth back into the skin, a step more commonly done with powder or even cream bronzers. The reason I'm not using a powder for this, which I'll, I'll explain more later on, is because powder will mattify the skin and I wanna keep this area luminous and dewy. And you can totally use a cream or liquid bronzer instead of a foundation if you prefer. There's nothing wrong with that, but I find that when using the same foundation formula together for these two different steps, they blend perfectly because you know they're the same formula, just two different shades. So you really don't risk any issue with the blending. I'm also just doing it this way because when I first started makeup, I didn't have a lot of money to you know, invest in a full shade range of foundations on top of bronzers and contour products and concealers and all of that good stuff. So I found ways to make it work and it stuck with me. So fast forward to today, I have almost every single makeup product that you could possibly imagine known to man. And I can still tell you that using a deeper shade foundation or concealer for this step will give me the same exact result as a product that's marketed as a cream or liquid bronzer. And that's just me keeping it real with you, you know? I still you know, love to keep it simple and, and, and practical, repurposing products for different steps of the makeup application. Okay, next I'm using the Jouer Essentials High Coverage Concealer and this is in the shade Macron and I'm gonna apply a little bit right there and a little bit right there you see then I'll head back to the same sponge to blend this out I applied the product you know right there because that's where I want it to be most um, you know concentrated in pigment and as I blend it outwards it'll create that diffused look give it a soft um, you know highlight to the upper cheekbone and with whatever I have left over on my sponge I'll take onto the upper eyelid. I don't use eyeshadow primers or anything. This is just a quick and easy and practical way for me to conceal the deeper um, like purple tones in the upper lid. And I'm gonna do the same for the other under eye, of course. Now I know some people like to apply the concealer here and then there and do like this whole mapping out situation. I don't understand the point of that because I end up blending it all together anyway. So if you wanna get technical with it, you totally can, whatever floats your boat, but I just like to be kind of quick and easy about it. I think it's important to mention as well that I use the same sponge throughout the whole makeup application. You know, even for skincare, if I'm applying it on with a sponge, I'll use the same one for the foundation, for the concealer, for the cream bronzer or whatever I'm using, right? Because that allows me to almost kind of mix and infuse all the products together. Even for right now, for example, if my concealer was too bright or if the concealer I was applying onto the client just too bright and I need to tone it down, I would just flip over to the other uh, sponge or the other side of the sponge, excuse me, and then tone it down and blend it out. And if you're somebody who likes blush, now would be the time to apply it. I'm gonna use this Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Happy. Place the smallest amount onto the back of my hands like that. See, that's all I need for both cheeks. It's more than enough. And then I'll take a brush like this it doesn't have a name on it. Um, I think it might be from BH Cosmetics, but that really doesn't matter. As long as you have a brush that's dense and on the smaller side like this, I'll press it into the pigment, really saturate the, the bristles of the brush into this and lightly start tapping it on. This right here is where I like to add blush on myself. The placement will be different depending on your preference or your, you know, your client's preference. But what's important to take away here is that I'm using a liquid blush, not a powder blush. If I wanna use a powder blush, I would use that or apply it after I've set my face 
with a translucent powder because a lot of times if you go straight onto a wet or slippery surface with a, a pigmented powder like blush or even bronzer, it can look patchy and it'll be difficult for you to blend. So by mattifying it first, you would get a smoother blend because you would be layering a powder pigment on top of a powder surface. And the same thing, as I said, goes for bronzer. Powders perform best with other powders, just as liquids and creams perform better with other liquids and creams. Now heading back to that same sponge, because this is looking crazy, I'm gonna press it in and diffuse it out and this will give us the perfect blend. What's nice about working with liquid complexion products is that you can always go back and revisit that step to add or take away or to blend up until the time you set it with powder. So for example, I just added a bit more cream blush in one little spot. If I find I want to add in a bit more of that concealer, I'll head back to the sponge that still has remnants of that concealer left and diffuse out those edges. So you can go back and forth and you have time to um, you know, play around with this up until the time you set it. And now that we're done with all of the liquid products we're gonna be using today, we can now go in and set it with powder. Now this is where it, it does become a bit more complicated. Well, not complicated, that's not the right word to use, but it definitely becomes more technical. We're only gonna be applying powders to the areas that one, we wanna mattify. Two, we want to prevent from creasing and moving around throughout the day. And three, areas where we know we're gonna to want to apply a pigment powder on top, such as a powder uh, blush or a powder bronzer. We've already added in our blush and bronzer pigments, so I'm only gonna be adding powder to my T-zone here. And I'm gonna be using this translucent setting powder from One Size Beauty to do this with. I start by pouring some of this powder into the palm of my hand, taking a powder puff, dipping it in, tapping off any excess, and then going in to set the under eye. I like to set the under eye first because this is usually first to crease, and I like using a powder puff for this so that I can really get in there and press this in. How much powder to use is dependent on how you or your client's skin can tolerate it, usually for more mature skin or those with fine lines around the eyes. I'll use less powder, but I still always use powder underneath the eyes. There are some people that refuse to use any powder underneath the eyes, and if that's you, keep doing it. If that makes you happy and you like the result it's giving you, then you know who am I to tell you any different? You know what I mean? But I can tell you, I've been doing this for long enough to know that even when a new client says that you know they don't use any powder underneath the eyes, they don't want any powder underneath the eyes, they are saying one thing, but I know what they mean. They, they don't want their under eyes to look powdery and cakey and for the powder to make them look even older than they did before the makeup. Is that, does that make sense? Which is totally understandable, by the way. I get it, you know, but there are techniques to go about that, which I can show in another video. But I know from experience that if, if I don't use the slightest bit of powder, on these complexion products, they're gonna slip and slide around. They'll, they'll settle into fine lines and the shadow will crease, the mascara will rub off on the lower lip. All these different issues that arise throughout the wear of the makeup. It'd be a different scenario if I was following someone around all day touching up their makeup or if I was on a photo shoot where I'm on set to touch up the makeup, but that's not usually the case. I need the makeup to last all throughout the day so a little powder is good for the soul. Now here's where we decide what other areas of the face that we want to mattify and set with powder. This step is what's gonna make or break this look, to be honest. I feel like that, that is that a little dramatic? I feel, I feel like I'm talking a lot, but I, do, I wanna include as much information as possible because these are things that really do make a big difference. So I'm gonna tell you where I like to and where I prefer to bring down the shine on the face. Right here on the sides of the nose, around the mouth onto the upper lip, the chin, and maybe just a smidge around the forehead. So with the same powder puff, I'm gonna dip it into more powder, work that powder into the puff, and start pressing this in. By doing this, we're creating an illusion, which is really what makeup is all about, right? Playing up the different finishes in different parts of the face to complement each other instead of you know keeping everything super glowy because there is a fine line between having a luminous, dewy, glowy look and then just flat out looking sweaty. Personally, my opinion is, is that when this area around the nose and upper lip and sides of the mouth are too shiny, in combination with everything else, it just looks like my 
client went for a run at the gym, you know? But by mattifying these areas, it complements the finish of the skin in the areas of the face that catches the light rather than having to compete against it. It's almost like the rest of your makeup, right? So if you pair a really dark, bold, smoky eye with a bold red lip and, and a lot of blush and all this stuff, it's too much. Like the human eye cannot absorb that much information. It's too distracting. There's too much going on. You can't focus on, oh, uh oh, you can't focus on one thing. And it's the same thing with your skin. If this is all glowy and shiny, it just reads sweaty and greasy. Whereas if you focus in on a few different aspects of the face that you want to remain luminous, like a little bit on the forehead, down the center of the nose, the cheekbones, but keep this matte, it just works out better. Again, it's, it's like we're creating one big illusion. Okay, here's where we really bring this glow to a whole other level. We're gonna head back to our Dalba face mist that we used earlier to prep the skin with. And we're not only gonna use this to melt the powders into the skin, but also to give us that real glass-like finish to the skin. Shake it up and spritz it on. Notice here, I am being kind of strategic with the placement of this. I'm keeping this more along the perimeter of the face right here because that's where I want the skin to reflect light for that dewy finish, but I wanna keep this matte. I don't want any shine here. So that's why I was putting my hand here, applying this on, and we're gonna let this soak in again. This is another reason why I fell in love with this skin mist. Besides using it to prep my skin with, it also gives the most beautiful finish to my makeup even when I go full coverage with it with powders and all, once I use this afterwards to set the makeup, it adds back that, that radiant skin-like finish to the skin that sometimes powders can take away. And I think that's because this is a serum. It has the consistency of an essence, but the skincare benefits of a serum, the, very similar, if you know which one I'm talking about, to that Cote de facial spray. Um, but what I find to be unique about this one is that it sprays evenly. It doesn't feel sticky on the skin. It can be reapplied throughout the day with or without makeup. It doesn't matter. Whenever your skin feels like it needs that drink of, of hydration. And more than anything, it's an all-in-one product for me. It's a, you know, a mist. It's a serum. It's a setting spray. So because of that, I think it's worth every single penny. But I do want to say... They have different kinds of this spray, and the one I'm using is called the White Truffle First Spray Serum. If any of you have tried out the other ones, please let me know what your thoughts are. I wanna try them, I just, I just haven't yet, so. I can't give you my honest opinion until I do, but I can say as for this one here, it's fantastic. And I highly recommend it to anyone and everyone who is wanting to try out a serum spray. It really adds to that final luminous look that I'm going for. I think we've given this enough time to dry down, don't you think? You can see, you know, the, let me see, what does it look like in the playback monitor? You can see it really adds that beautiful glow to the skin exactly where I want it, to the high points of the face, the forehead, this is how I like my makeup. Now when I'm filming in the studio and I have a lot of bright lights, I might add a bit more powder, but otherwise for my every you know everyday life, this is the kind of makeup I go for. My skin looks like a skin and that's how I like it. So anyways, I'm gonna finish my makeup real quick off camera and I'll be right back. And there we have it, kids. I was thinking while I was doing the, uh, the eye makeup that I, Spencer, you kind of talked a lot in today's tutorial, but I enjoyed filming this kind of video with you guys. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while now. And if you enjoy this mini masterclass style of tutorial, then let me know. I can do one for highlighting and contouring. I can do one for a matte complexion. I can do another one for how to shade match for different undertones. The list goes on and on. But if you did enjoy today's tutorial, please give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer and on TikTok. And until next time, I'll see you soon.